If you'll join me by opening your Bibles um, to Acts chapter 2, there will be a couple places that we'll be um, looking in the scripture throughout today. Most of it will be paraphrased throughout the stories that I will tell, but we will take a look at a few places in here. When the kids were little, um, their dad, Pastor Joe, who for the sermon will be Joey, because that's what I call him, he would tell the kids ghost stories. And when they were really little, when he first started telling stories, they were always very nervous about it. You know, they were kind of like, look, like, are you really telling the truth? Is that really true? But as they got older, they became so familiar with these same stories that he would tell over and over and over. And he had this favorite little ghost that he would tell the kids stories about that he named Flip Flop Flappy Jack Give the Dog a Bone. And after some years of telling stories, it just became Flip Flop. <clears throat> and Flip Flop was this little ghost that did a lot of silly things. And so he wasn't really too scared. Pastor Joe, you snuck in. <laughs> And so after years of um, telling the stories, the kids were just in awe and amazement, and they loved hearing the stories. So they went from this kind of um, scaredness to this excitement. Well, one of their favorite stories was um, Pastor Joe told the kids that while he was at home one day, there was a knock at the door. And when he opened the door, there was a pizza man standing there with some pizzas. And he said to the pizza man, I didn't, I didn't order any pizzas. And he said, well, I got a call from this house, and you did order some pizzas. And he told the kids, I, I told the pizza man, I did not order those pizzas. And then he said, all of a sudden, Flip Flop Flappy Jack, Give the Dog a Bone, came through the window to the front, grabbed the pizzas, and disappeared. And that was one of their favorite stories. And they were always, is that true? Is that true? What do you think? And so as the years went on, the kids knew these stories weren't true, but they loved hearing these ghost stories. So we decided one Halloween after we walked around with the kids in the neighborhood, we'd have everybody come back and Joey could tell the kids these fun little ghost stories. So as we're sitting around the fire and the flames are aglowing, he's telling these silly stories, but just the word hearing ghost, some of the kids were just wide-eyed and they were nervous even though the stories were silly, but not Haley and Hayden. I mean, they were just giggling. He could have stopped at any point, and they would have finished those stories for him because they were very familiar with those stories. And they were not scared. And so we found out, like, the next week that there was one little girl who didn't want to go in her basement that week. It took her a little while before she wanted to go in the basement. A couple of the kids would close the curtains a little earlier than they usually would. And that's just because they weren't familiar. They didn't know about this funny little ghost that we had heard about for so many years that was just fun stories to have some fun. Well, today I want to share a few ghost stories with you. And the ghost stories that I'm going to share with you start at the day of Pentecost and then move on from there. The ghost in this story is a different ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. And we're going to see the Holy Ghost working in and through these stories from the day of Pentecost and moving forward. And just like in the stories with the kids, how they were in awe and amazed at these stories that their dad would tell, and some kids were a little nervous, we're going to see in these ghost stories that there are mixed emotions as well. Some of the people in these stories are going to be excited and astonished and amazed, while others of them are going to have things like jealousy or anger and frustration. And we're going to see that parallel through these stories, and we'll talk about why that might be. So my first story is called The Ghost Wind. As you heard in the reading this morning of Pal Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came into that place like a mighty wind. And a lot of the people were amazed at what was happening, but some were bewildered and they wondered and confused and even were teasing, are these people drunk? They weren't familiar with the Holy Spirit, with this Holy Ghost. And if they were, not in such a way that it brought them any kind of comfort at this point in their lives. And so Peter takes some time to answer them, no, these people are not drunk. They're not drunk at all. And he went in to talk about Jesus and how Jesus died on the cross, and that was all a part of the plan that was told in the Old Testament. That this Jesus was the fulfillment of prophecy and that he truly was the Messiah. And so he takes time to tell these people what's actually happening, and they are caught up. What should we do? He says, repent, be baptized, and be saved. And those people receive the Holy Spirit at that time. About 3,000 at that time were added to the numbers of people who were 
catching on to this Holy Ghost spirit. But there were people still around them who weren't quite convinced of this Holy Ghost. And day by day, even still, the Lord was adding numbers to them, those who were saved, who repented, and who turned from their ways. That Holy Ghost wind came through that place, and it changed people's lives. The second ghost story comes a little bit later in chapter 3. And this one is the Holy Ghost healer. The ghost healer is the, is the second story. In this story, some people were, wonder, had, were full of wonder. They were amazed, utterly astonished, but some were annoyed. If you know this story, if you look there in chapter 3, you know that there was a beggar that was very familiar to the people. They would carry him out to the gate all the time, and he would beg there for money. And on this particular day, he was there where he always was, and Peter and John come walking by, and he asks for some provisions. Peter says, I don't have anything with me, but instead he reaches out and he says, get up and be healed. And that man in that moment stood up, he held their hands, they picked him up, he was receiving this Holy Ghost upon him, and he was healed immediately. They went into the temple and people saw him there, they knew him, they said, this is that same man that's been at the gate all these years, and they're wondering what has happened? How did this happen? This is amazing. They're astonished, but still wondering, how could this be? And Peter wants to make sure that he keeps the attention off of himself and puts credit where credit is due, because this is a ghost story after all. And he reminds them that anything that he does is in the name of God, that it is with his power that these things happen, not of his own. He reminds them again that it is time to repent and to be baptized and to recognize and become familiar with this Holy Ghost. And as much amazement and astonishment as there is, in come the Pharisees, in come the Sadducees, in come the chief priests. And how are they feeling? Pretty annoyed. They're very frustrated because they already know that Peter and John are spreading these ghost stories throughout the area and that people in droves are believing and being moved and becoming familiar with the Holy Spirit. So they arrest them. In their annoyance, they arrest them, thinking, well, surely this will silence them and stop these ghost stories from spreading. And because it was later in the day, they decided to just hold on to them and deal with them the next day. And even still, while being put in jail, many were added to the numbers, about 5,000, as people started to learn of this Holy Ghost. That leads me to ghost story number three. It's called The Unstoppable Ghost. So the next day, we have a story that's also filled with amazement. But what we're going to notice as we continue through these stories is those that have grasped onto this Holy Spirit, the emotions that they feel continue to get stronger as they continue to get more familiar with the Holy Ghost, their power becomes greater. And those on the other side who've been doubting or who are annoyed, their emotions also get stronger, but in the opposite direction. And that desperation kicks in. So in this story, we have amazement and praise and boldness. And that's going to be paired with some threatening, some intimidation, and definitely some fear. So in this story, The Unstoppable Ghost which we're in um, Acts chapter 4, and we'll um, hit some verses in a minute. The rulers and scribes, they all come together. They get Peter and John out of the jail, and they question them. By what power did you do this? How did you do this? How was this man healed? And Peter again reminds them that it is the Holy Spirit. He is filled with the Holy Spirit, and he says, I have healed in Jesus' name through salvation in Jesus alone. That's the only way this can happen. And those Pharisees and scribes and all those leaders who were collected looked and they recognized the boldness of Peter and John. Even after just coming out of the jail, even knowing that they were annoyed at them, Peter and John continued with this boldness. They were familiar with this Holy Ghost. They wondered, what should we do with these, what should we do with these guys? They're realizing that this Holy Ghost is unstoppable. He's moving about the people. They're sharing these ghost stories, and people's lives are being changed. So they try to keep them from speaking. They say, you can't speak in the name of Jesus. You can't tell these stories anymore. 
and they threaten them, but nothing's working. So in their desperation, they just let them go and figure, well, we'll figure something else, else out from here. Well, Peter and John, after being released, they go and they join their friends. And let's take a look in chapter 4, verse 31, and see what happens after they pray. They gather together with their friends. They tell them what had happened. They tell them about this conversation with these um, priests and elders and all these people. And this is what happens in verse 31. When they had prayed, so this is after, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with what? Boldness. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. This unstoppable Holy Ghost is moving, and he's unstoppable. He just keeps moving. And when that happened, it's not just about Peter and John and the apostles anymore. He's there with his friends. They all get the Holy Spirit, and they were of one soul and one heart. How often can we say that in a place where we are? Even sitting in this pew right now, do you feel that in this place we're of one heart and one soul? Do you feel that when you're in your home, when you're at your place of work, where you are in your own spirit? These people were of one heart and one soul because the Holy Spirit was upon them so powerfully, and they recognized it, and they allowed him to come on them. And then it says that they took their possessions and everything they owned, and they held it in common. They were so moved by this unstoppable ghost that they sold everything they had to make sure that everybody had enough. How often do we do that? Do we do that? I know in a lot of places I see a lot of people just holding what's theirs. This is mine, and that's yours, and this is this, and this is that. But here, when they were filled with the Spirit, they were so moved to take everything they had and make sure everybody was taken care of. That's pretty bold. And that boldness is coming through from this unstoppable ghost. Verse 34, there was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had a need. This unstoppable ghost was on a move. People were hearing these ghost stories, and their lives were remarkably changed. Even those who were threatened, felt threatened, or who were intimidated and having fear, they're still having their lives changed as well. It's just they're having to get stronger and harder against this Holy Spirit. The next story is called Ghost Power. In this story, we have a bunch of mixed emotions as well. We have victory and power versus jealousy, fear, and rage. These are the words that we hear in the scripture. So again, as I mentioned, those angry things feelings are going to get stronger, but so are those amazing ones. We've moved from amazement and astonishment into victory and power. So in this story, ghost power, signs and wonders are happening all over the place. Believers are being added all the time. People are so familiar with this Holy Ghost and what he can do that they're taking people and putting them in the streets, just hoping that Peter's shadow will fall upon them. What does that sound like? When Jesus was on earth, right? If they could just touch his cloak. But Jesus isn't here anymore, and now the Holy Spirit is here upon Peter, allowing his work to continue on earth, and the people notice it. But the high priests and all those people, they're jealous. They, they're ha things are happening, and they don't know how to stop it. They don't know how to really be a part of it. So all they can do is try to stop it. So what do they do? They arrest Peter and John. Well, surely if we put them in jail, that'll get them. That'll stop these ghost stories from spreading. Well, for one, they didn't think about all the people who had already become familiar with the Holy Spirit outside of the prison who are sharing ghost stories. But did they really think that the jail would keep them in there? If you know the story, at night an angel comes in, gets Peter and John out of the prison, and commands them, go back out in the morning, go into front of the temple, go to the temple, and keep sharing your story. Keep telling about this life. And so they do. Well, in the morning, the um, prisoner um, police go to look for Peter and John. When they get there, they see the guards are there, the jail is closed, but Peter and John are not in there. 
And so they run back and tell the chief priests and all of them, and they're trying to figure out what's going on. They find Peter and John. They say, didn't we give you strict orders to stop teaching in his name? Didn't we tell you to quit telling these ghost stories? And they said, are we to obey you, human authority, or is our allegiance to God? Are we to listen to him? What should we do? And the, the priests and the Pharisees, all that were gathered, were enraged. So much so that they wanted to kill Peter and John. But a Pharisee of all people chimes in and he says, wait a minute. I've kind of seen this thing before. Someone's going to die. That's basically how the story goes. This isn't going to go well. He says, if you look in verse 38, chapter 5 of Acts, the Pharisee warns them, and he says, So in this present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. If this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will what? Fail. Fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may be found fighting against God. Every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease from teaching and proclaiming about Jesus, the Messiah. That unstoppable ghost had come so far that even these people who were enraged because they refused to become familiar and to allow the Holy Spirit to change their lives, their lives were changed still. They didn't kill them. They weren't enraged. They let them go. Why? Because they recognized, too, the power of this Holy Ghost. It didn't mean that they accepted the Holy Spirit upon themselves to repent and receive that and be baptized, but it changed their lives even still no matter how hard they've tried to push. In all of these ghost stories, they were filled with emotions. And we all have ghost stories that we could tell. We each have moments in our lives that the Holy Spirit is present. The amazing thing is that it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just sometimes we don't recognize it. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we're frustrated, where we're scared, where we're anxious. Why is that? In that moment, we're forgetting to be familiar with the Holy Ghost. We're forgetting to remember that the Holy Ghost is present in everything that happens in our lives. And when we feel that anxiety and when we feel the anger and we feel the jealousy or whatever that emotion is that we're feeling, it's because we've forgotten to be familiar with the Holy Ghost. And today, it's a reminder to think about the ghost stories that we have and how the Holy Spirit is always at, always at work. Let me get some water. When I was teaching in Atlanta, I loved my job so much. And um, whew, get emotional about thinking about it. Um, I loved the students that I worked with. I loved the children that I worked with. I worked in really, really challenging schools with um, very low-income students, and it was amazing. But I had decided, and we had, as a family, decided that I was going to stay home with the kids. We were going to homeschool, and so I put in my resignation, and I let the kids' school know that I was going to um, be pulling them out for the next school year. And the principal said, we'd really love Haley to stay and graduate through fifth grade. So maybe you'd want to work here and just let her finish out the next school year. And I said, well, I'm trying to come home and, and be home more. And they said, well, we have a paraprofessional position available if you want that. And I thought, well, okay, well, that might work. I wouldn't have to plan all those lessons. I could just come in, be with the kids, help where needed, do cafeteria duty. That was not fun. But I took the job. After two months of taking that job, and it was a pretty easy job, and it was um, not as fulfilling as what I had been doing, but I was very grateful for the job. After two months of that job, my former principal called me and offered me a different position. He offered me an opportunity to come back to the school two days a week, have my own office, make whatever curriculum I needed to. All he needed me to do was work with struggling teachers and work with the bottom 10% of the kids to move them up so that they could be successful. And I'm like, dream job. But I just took this job. 
How could it be that God would open up the opportunity for this job over here and then two months later this amazing job come up for me that's perfect for me? And I was so frustrated. I was anxious about it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to let this school down, but I didn't want to not help these children. And I found for a couple of weeks I was just in turmoil about it. I was in turmoil. I was forgetting that the Holy Spirit was at work. Long story short, I ended up feeling like I really needed to leave. I went to the principal. I said, I've never left a job this soon. I don't know how this really happened, but I feel like I need to go. She said, you absolutely do need to go. I can tell by your spirit that that's where you need to be. And I still felt very unsettled about it. Well, my last day at that job, my replacement came so I could train her. And while we were in cafeteria duty with all of that noise, she shared with me that she had been praying to work at that school for a long time. Her children were at the school and some of her younger children were just starting to come up and she had been wanting to work at that school and there was never an opportunity. And two months before that, she could not have taken the job to work there. It was in that moment that I realized that God used that job for me as a stepping stone for her story. And I was just in awe of how the Holy Spirit works. I said, my goodness, here I was anxious and frustrated and scared and feeling like I didn't know what to do. All the while, it's because I forgot about the unstoppable ghost that's always at work in these stories of our lives. And that changed me. I've never seen the Holy Spirit the same again. When the Holy Spirit is at work, we don't always get to see that side. It's just I think God gave me an extra blessing that day so that I could see the inner workings of what the Spirit does. So when we have these times where we're anxious and we don't understand, well, why is this happening? Why is my car breaking down? You know, why did I lose my job? You know, why are my kids not in church? You know, why this? Why that? It's because we don't know where the Holy Spirit is at work and how he's moving. And sometimes the final say is a part of somebody else's story. And so we have to trust this unshakable, unmovable, powerful, bold ghost that runs through our lives. My challenge to you today is to think about your own ghost stories. I hope when you came in today, you got one of these notebooks. This is for your ghost stories. You know, if the Holy Spirit is working in our lives every day, we have many stories to tell. So I give you two challenges. One is this week and over the next months or whatever, pray and ask God, what ghost stories do you want me to share with the people around me? Because in this story, starting at Pentecost and moving on, those ghost stories were changing lives quickly. What stories might God want you to share? Maybe you just write down the characters in that story, the emotions that you had in the story, the setting of the story. Or maybe you write out the full story to remind yourself of those ghost stories and how God moved in your life. And then the second thing I want you to pray for is whom might God be wanting you to share those ghost stories with? So that's what this journal is for. Um, if you have yours and it's upside down, that means you're just extra special today. Apparently in my haste um, over the week, I did some of them upside down, but nonetheless, this is for your ghost stories. And I pray that this week you will see the Holy Ghost at work. And when you find yourself being anxious and afraid, and when you find yourself being scared and uncertain, be very careful that we don't get caught up in those emotions where we forget the Holy Spirit and we forget that we should be familiar. You know, we should be reminded that the Holy Ghost is always on the move so that we can be more in awe and astonished and amazed and at peace and sharing Christ with everybody that we know. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for today, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord. We thank you for ghost stories that are all throughout the scriptures. God, we thank you that the Holy Ghost is, at move, at, is moving in our lives always. God, sometimes we're more like the Pharisees and the chief priests where we, we are not familiar. We forget that the Holy Ghost is at work. We just see the current situation and we forget that your plan is perfect. God, I thank you for the opportunity you gave me to see the other side of the story. Lord, changing my life and seeing how the Holy Spirit moves. God, I just pray that each person in here would have an opportunity this week to think about the ghost stories in their lives. What stories would you want them to tell and with whom would you want them to share them? 
Give us the boldness that Peter and John had to come straight out of jail and still speak about the Holy Spirit. God, that we wouldn't be silenced by um, the pressures of the day or the people around us who are unfamiliar with the Holy Ghost, Lord, that we would continue to share these ghost stories with everyone we meet. In your name, amen. So in just a minute, we're going to sing, and if you are feeling called to share a ghost story and you want to share it with me, I'll be down front. You can share it with me. If during that prayer time, God says, oh, I know a ghost story I want you to share, jot it down so that you don't forget and you have it ready, and then fill this up over the weeks and the months and the years even with all the ghost stories that God puts in your life so that we can change the lives of others. Until my heart is clean, let sunshine fill its inmost heart with not a cloud between. Breathe on me. you be seated for a moment. You know that everything I talk about always comes to nature or gardening. When I was talking to Pastor Joe about how the Spirit was moving on me and uh, the sermon that he wanted me to preach today, which the first thing he gave me eight weeks ago was just ghost stories. I was listening to a familiar artist that uh, Millie and um, Kim love too, David Crowder, and ghost stories popped in my head, and I had no idea what God had in store, and, and it came to this. But we were outside, and we were talking about it, and I had just started feeding blue jays in my yard. The blue jays come, they get the peanuts, they go up on the branch, and they eat them right away. They enjoy them right away. But the squirrels, if you've ever fed squirrels, they're very different. The squirrels come, they get the nut, they run all over the place, sometimes right there, across the street, down the block, and they bury them. And they keep coming back, and they keep coming back, and they keep coming back. And I said, do the squirrels ever eat these peanuts? No, they really bury them. Do you know, so we looked it up to see how often the squirrels find the nuts they bury. Do you know what percent of the nuts they find that they bury? 20 to 30 percent. That's it. Only 20 to 30 percent. You know what? The blue jays and other birds will sit up there and even watch where they bury them, and they partake of the peanuts that the squirrels bury. So the squirrels are really missing out. They think they're storing all of this stuff up, but then half the time they go back, more than half the time, and what they stored is not there. And it really got both of us thinking about how when we have these ghost stories and we keep them to ourselves and we don't share with anybody, especially if we only share as much as the squirrels actually find those peanuts. Can you imagine if only 20 to 30% of the people we know hear about Christ because we don't share our ghost stories? How are people going to know if we don't share? 20 to 30% isn't enough. So we need to be like the blue jays. They get the peanut, they partake right away. When the spirit is moving in your life, tell somebody about it. Sue, we had a conversation in the Family Life Center where Sue told me of her encountering the Holy Spirit. It was amazing. She said, I don't know if that's what it was, but I'm pretty sure I said, oh, yeah, that was the Holy Spirit. She knew in that moment, and she said, I didn't tell you right away, but then I, I came back and she shared it and, it, and it moved my spirit to hear that. Don't hold it to yourselves. Don't bury those things. Some of the stories you have to share might be painful, hurtful to your own self, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't be shared. 
You know, Pastor Joe and I have realized over the years, sometimes people will put us on a pedestal just because of this position. And when I realized that, I said, oh, we got to share our story more. We got to tell people about what it was like after your father died. We got to talk to people about several sessions, you know, stints in marriage counseling. We need people to understand that we're just like everybody else. So we started sharing those stories and it blessed us and it helps other people. So please take those notebooks. Let God speak to you about what ghost stories he wants you to share and with whom he wants you to share. And if you didn't get a notebook on the way out, back here, they're on the table. Out front, there are two youth out there who will get them to you. Feel free to take extras. Bring them to a friend and share your ghost story. Zoe's going to pray for us today. Good morning. Um, may you please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today to ask you that we may all feel the love you have for us that we all know how important we are to the world. I ask you to help the people who are grieving losses, that they may find peace within you, that those who go through anxieties may resort to you and find a place of comfort. As read in the Bible, Bible as read in the Bible, Romans 8.18, the pain you've been feeling can't compare to the joy that's coming. I pray that everyone here in this room and the people out in the world know you have a plan for each and every one of us, that you are what we need, that the people who are suffering from many different pains may find you and love you just as you love us. That the people in this room today may spread the gospel and help the people who need you more than ever find the love and peace you give. Lord, you are wonderful, and I pray you bring these people comfort. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Thank you. And Zoe wrote that prayer. <laughs> We invite you to come back this afternoon for the Treasure Coast Chorale at 4 o'clock. This one's really special uh, for me. It's a birthday concert, but um, I got to choose the, not only the music, but some uh, readings that are very uh, important to me. Uh, my friends are going to be here not only in the choir, but uh, playing instruments. We've got a killer rhythm section, brass coming, the handbells will be playing, and... Um, we, 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 I hope that you'll invite someone and, and come and, and be a part of a part of this sacred as well as uh, not so sacred, but don't get me started on that because I think it's all sacred. But anyway, and then next Sunday, we celebrate the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. So you know there's going to be some singing of holy, holy, holy. I hope that you'll be here. Two services next Sunday. All the other announcements are in the bulletin. Thank you for being here. Please stand as we sing. Our Father, we chart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory
Also, I need just a little help in moving furniture after the service. If you can help, thank you very much. Amen.